Hey guys, today I will talk you a method about to generate another dead time and to, to generate safely another dead time in your synchronous circuit. Now, as you remember, in another video I explained I explained this method here, which used the RC, which is called RC dead time. Basically, you provide a square wave at the input, like this, and then you generate the, the, the positive and the negative and the inverted square waveform with a, a buffer like this. DRC, what it does is to delay the turn on, but it will not delay the turn off because it will follow the diode. And with this circuit here, you will generate you will generate basically at that time because it is slowed at the right time in both in both, and this will be slowed in the in the other time. And so you you will have two synchronous waveform with the time. You can see this in my video. But now since this circuit uh, has some problems. Uh, like uh, uh, the capacitor can have uh, tolerances, so it, it is not uh, so much reliable in, in real life. We want to simulate uh, something which is uh, near the real life, which uses which uses logic gates. So first, you start to generate your triangular waveform with your constant waveform, with your with, with your constant voltage here, and you fed into a comparator. This uh, will generate uh, your your square waveform as you always know. Then you fit this in two in in two uh, end like this. The first end will have a delay time of TD, and the other end will be safe. Now, what does it? What this does is to generate the same square waveform like this, but translated. So at the end of the day, you will have an end an end between the original waveform, the green. And the red, which is this. Now, if you do the end between these two, the result will be this. So you generated, you generated a square waveform with a dead time TD, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. And the other square waveform, well. <coughs> you use uh, you do the same with the inverted uh, point. So let's open a little spice. Let's define the uh, the parameters FSD as you know. Let's define the square the triangular waveform as you know. It is just uh, the pulse between one over two FS as you as you know in, in my thousand of videos because uh, the period is one over FS and the rest time is one over two FS. And then uh, you can define the D, the voltage D, and then you can select the Schmidt trigger, the different Schmidt trigger. Now, take care that if you run the simulation now, uh, it won't work. So if you do this, it won't work, even though the, the system is correct. The reason why it doesn't is because you have to select at the inter uh, inside the value you have to select the VT equal to zero and VH equal to zero. That will define the, the hysteresis of your comparator. And now, if you run the simulation, it will work. In some Lattice Spice version, you can have problems with the rise time of this guy. It can be inferior to, uh, one nanosec to 100 nanosecond if it is. Now, my, mine it isn't. Mine isn't. It's 10 nanosecond. If your is if your uh, rise time is like uh, 500, 500 seconds, 500 nanoseconds, you have to do this. You have to uh, select the, uh, the the transient and select maximum time step maximum time step equal to one nano. This uh, will help to speed will will help to uh, improve the rise time of your circuit. Now, if I check again, uh, the difference uh, should be minimal. As you can see, uh, the rest time has improved to one nanosecond. So I still have an improvement because the maximum test step is set to one nanosecond. So there is still an improvement, and this is uh, uh, so this is uh, more reliable than before. Uh, so now what we have to do is to use the end gate. Uh, now the the triangle I can uh, toggle this information here because we don't need it. 
we use the end gate with value td equal to that time dt this will help to ah it's only td sorry for that and let's make another end like this You can, you can put to ground the other pins that you don't use, or you can leave them like this. It's to your uh, discretion. Let's copy this to this. And let's, uh, um, and let's uh, see, uh, let's call this, uh, these guys PYMA and PYMB. And let's see the simulation if it does hold. Let's run the simulation and let's check PUMH and PUMB. As you can see, I have generated successfully the two, that side, the two uh, synchronous waveform as intended. Um, now, this square waveform generation is intended for full bridge, for, for, for uh, the full bridge. And not for a synchronous back configuration. Yes, sorry. Uh, uh, let me explain. Let, let me explain better, um, because this is important. In a back configuration, when you have a back or a boost configuration, let's for instance uh, use the the back. When you have a back configuration like this, the first has duty cycle D, and the other one minus D. Because when this is on, the other is on in, in the other cycle, like this, because it has to create the path for, it, for the inductor to charge and discharge the inductor. And this is something that you already know. Okay. But uh, when you are in a full bridge configuration, like this, and this is connected to a transformer, take care that uh, the first MOSFET. Uh, one, two, uh, three, and four. The first MOSFET, when you 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 um, you turn on this uh, and you create this part here, take care that uh, the other the other MOSFET has the same duty cycle. So if this guy has D, also the other guy have D, with of course the proper translation. So you can't have, so here you have, for instance, 70% uh, of duty cycle and here 20%, minus the dead time, and it is correct. Here you have, for instance, duty cycle D equal to 30%. The maximum duty cycle here is 50%, because otherwise you, you will have a, a solvent position here, and a, a leg short. So everyone will have the same duty cycle D, and if you want to impose a shorter duty cycle, you have to reduce you have to reduce the dead time. So for instance, you set D to equal to 0 0.5, and you set the dead time D to 200 nanosecond. In this way, you will have a waveform like this. And the other like this. You want to drive a, a full bridge like this. So now, in order to use uh, this two waveform to to drive, for instance, for instance, a synchronous back converter, let me put 0 0.3 now for for example. Now, oh, as you can see, I'm generating a, I'm generating inverted waveform, and it is correct. Let let me put 0 0.5. Now, if you want to use this two waveform for a back converter. Because this is what you want to do at the end of the day. It is quite uh, tricky. So let's use the true MOSFET. Uh, let me close this. And now you want to... And now you want... Uh, Oh, I missed. 
the inductor. I'm putting random values because I don't really care in, in this moment. Now, this is a bug. 10 volts, this is a consider dot 5. You have to connect somehow this PVM A to PVM and PVM B to the back. Now you can well now what you can do if you are you can use two methods. The first is the gain E1, so you can connect the gain like this. And multiply the waveform by five because uh, the guy is between 0 and 1. Now, if I run the simulation, it should work because you are um, the, the transient is too low, sorry. Let me put at least uh, 1 millisecond. Because now you have the PWMH PWM A here, but uh, 0, 1 is not sufficient to turn on a MOSFET. So between the gate and source, you have to, you have to, you must have 0, 5 at least. And so you see that I'm providing correctly 0, 5, and here I have 0, 5. So the MOSFET are on, the, um, the this which waveform is correct because it is it is between zero and the input voltage, and the output output voltage is uh, five volts. Yes, it is not exactly it is not exactly five volts because I'm putting I'm putting at the time very high, and and higher that the the time like this will basically eat your duty cycle. How can you say that? How can, you, how can you measure the, the impact of the dead time on your switching frequency? You can do this simple calculation here. You take the switching frequency, which is equal to 250 kilo, kilohertz in this case. Then you, you use the TS, which is 1 over the switching frequency, F switch. So let me use a calculator. 1 over 200, 0, 0, 0 which is uh, 0 0.00004, let's multiply it by 1000, again for 1000, okay, so it is equal to 4 microseconds. Uh, now you have the dead time TD, which is equal to 100 nanoseconds, but the, the on time, the T on, is equal to D times TS. So in this case, it should be 2 microseconds. Let me check. Maybe I did something wrong. Eh? So let, 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 let me check. The, the on time should be 2 nanoseconds. And the on time, as you can see, is 1.89. Because the, on, the, real, the real T on time, T on time real, is equal to D times TS minus TD, which is in this case 1.9 microseconds. This, uh, you can now recalculate the duty cycle D, so the, D, the, the real duty cycle D is equal to T on real, so 1.9 microseconds, over the TS for microseconds. Micro, micro goes away, so we have 1.9 over 4. And uh, if you do this, uh, 1.9 over 4, you see that we have 0.47% of duty cycle. If you do now the equation of the, of the back, which is VO equal uh, D times V in, you do have 10 times 0 .475, uh, which is equal to 475 volts. Now the real the, the output uh, the VO output real will take into account also the drop of the RDS on of the MOSFET times I. And so you will lose like uh, uh, some millivolts, like 100 millivolts, 
something like that. So I expect the output to be around uh, uh, 4.68, 4.7, something like that. So the simulation proves reliable for this reason. If you see the output voltage, it is around 4.72, and it is in and uh, it is not spice, which is uh, uh, lagging or something like that, but because we have made all this calculation to prove that uh, the uh, and higher the time will basically eat your will basically eat your duty cycle, as you can see. If I put uh, the duty cycle D to 0 0.475 and the dead time to 1 nanosecond, trust me, it's not enough, so I will have spikes, and I, I do run the simulation, I should have something very similar to what I calculated here. I should have something very similar to uh, what I had before. Let me, uh, let me, let me check. And as you can see, at one millisecond, uh, oh, I have five dot two. Uh, maybe because I inverted the duty cycles. Uh, let me check uh, for one uh, for one second. Oh, um. Sorry, just just for one second. Let me put zero dot two. I I don't know if I accidentally. Sorry, eh? let me let me let me check for a moment. I don't know if I I accidentally. Oh. Ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I accidentally inverted the. the... I accidentally inverted the duty cycles because if I put 0 0.2, I actually have 0 0.2 on the low side and not the other way around. Uh, so, sorry. So, uh, this is actually the, the contrary. Uh, it's, it's the same. Eh? Just um, just take, take care and just take care to what you do uh, on, the, on your... Uh, Always verify, always verify the correct duty cycle that you want to, to get. So now you should have... Uh, now I should really have 4. Uh, um, what I calculated here, 4.68. I should really get that. And as you can see, I really get that. 4.74. So my simulation proves uh, reliable. Let me put again 0 0.5. Uh, okay, uh, let me give you another 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 um, suggestion. When you start with 0 0.5, you don't actually notice who is the first and who is the second. Okay, so let's put always uh, an asymmetric duty cycle at first, like 0 0.4, so you can get really who is the who is the complementary and who is not. So now I you can clearly see who is not and who isn't. Like this. PMH is 0 0.4 and PMB is, is 70%. Is 60%, sorry. Okay, so um I can finish the so I can finish the video here because uh, I explained you everything. With this technique, you can even have a variable PWM, a variable uh, square wave, which maybe I would do in another video. So this technique is very, very useful. So uh, I can end the video here, everything seems to work fine. Let me see the transit. Um, I can close the video here and uh, uh, thank you for your attention, guys. And uh, let's see you in the next video.